everyone and welcome to the Climate and Nature Summit. My name is Sue Adams from Education for Sustainability and today we are going to look at fast fashion. So we're going to explore the human impacts of the first fast fashion industry. So who is making our clothes and where are they made? The environmental impacts, the materials and the chemicals and the process and the transport of how our clothes are made. But most importantly, by the end of the session, we will have lots of ideas of things that you and I can do to reduce our fast fashion impact. Here's some key words for you to look out for. Your teacher might stop the video Video now give you time to jot down the keywords into your folders and as we go through the presentation you can match the definitions to the keywords some keywords to look out for in particular with fast fashion are things like social and environmental justice climate change workers rights ethical training and the role of the consumer so when we're talking about fast fashion, it can be described as a highly profitable business and how it works is it's where high fashion catwalk designs are produced really quickly using really low quality materials and they're put out within the fast 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 fashion brands and uh, when i was small with clothes used to be produced there was typically a winter and a summer collection and that was it nowadays because of fast fashion we're actually seeing about 52 collections micro collections every single year so we're producing a lot of clothes a lot of waste um, but we're also producing it using really low quality materials and this is a problem because our clothes aren't lasting very long. And it's also a problem because the clothes are cheap. So they tend to, we tend to, because the materials aren't, aren't very good, if something rips or if a button comes off because the materials aren't great and the clothes don't cost very much money, we tend to actually throw the clothes out instead of mending them or fixing them, which is what we used to do in the past. So fast fashion is actually the world's second largest polluter after fossil fuel, which is absolutely astronomical considering fossil fuel is the main driver of climate change. So the relationship between fast fashion industry and fossil fuel is, is really clear in the way that our clothes are made. So some of the impacts of the industry are things, also things like climate change, water pollution, fumes, river pollution, pesticides, landfill, and then the human side of it impacts on workers' rights and child labour as well. So why is the fast fashion industry a problem? It's a problem because we're accumulating a lot of waste. So we're producing about 80 billion garments a year, which is astronomical. That's about 400% more clothes than when I was small. And again, because the materials our clothes are made from are cheap, they don't last very long. We wear those fast fashion items about seven times and then we throw them out and we're just having this accumulation of waste and waste and waste. So the carbon emissions are also um, a massive part on the way that we make our clothes um, and the way that we are using our clothes and the contribution of emissions that goes into the clothes, the way, the way they're made, the way they're packaged and the chemicals, the fertilizers used to grow the, the crop in order to blend the top of the clothes with the cheap polyester or things like that. So it's a big problem. So some of the environmental impacts, other environmental impacts are things like soil degradation. So if we need to cut down forests for things like cotton plants or even bamboo or something like that, the chemicals used in the process then. Um, 70 million barrels of oil are used in the production of polyester um, annually every year. So that ties again, climate change and fossil fuels. Polyester, we would normally blend that then with cotton um, or any other material as well. A lot of our clothes are made from poly polyester, which are essentially oil. So chemicals are used in every part of the process when it comes to um, the way that our clothes are made. And actually 23% of all chemicals used worldwide are used for the fast fashion industry. So we can really see and begin to understand the tie between climate change, fossil fuels, and the way that our clothes are made. 
Water pollution is another big issue. So I might invite all of you actually, if you're wearing a uniform, if you could all actually stop the video for a minute, take your shoe off and everybody in the room call out where your shoe was made. If you're not wearing a uniform, have a look in your jacket or your jumper and everybody, again, I want to know, call out where your clothes are made, what countries, have a look at the tag and, and see what countries your clothes are made from. Pause the, minute, pause the video for a minute and let's have a have, see what we, what we discover. So when it comes to shoes, I hope you found that exercise interesting. When it comes to shoes, predominantly a lot of our shoes are made in China, Vietnam and Bangladesh. Similarly, a lot of our clothes, the main areas, the main countries our clothes are, are made, are it's the same. It's China, India and Bangladesh. So we outsource a lot of our clothing and our shoes the, to these countries. Number one, because labour is cheap. And number two, um, because the within these areas, um, We've traditionally outsourced our clothing and our shoes to these areas. And at the time, it was supposed to be a win-win where um, people in the developing countries would actually get jobs and they'd be able to bring themselves out of the poverty line. But what has actually happened because the fast fashion industry is based on profit, we've set countries, we've set factories up in these countries, China, India, and Bangladesh, and the labor rights of the people and the environmental laws of um, within these countries, they exist, but they're quite loose. So what we're seeing is factories that have been set up and environmental protection isn't necessarily very stringent. And as a result, then the factories are polluting straight into the waterways of the areas where these people live. So, for example, you can see here um, that the river is highly polluted. So it's kind of the same if you think about where some of you might have well water. Where I live, I have a reservoir and you can imagine a jeans factory setting up at, at beside the reservoir and just pumping all of that blue dye into the water and then us drinking the water. It just wouldn't happen in Ireland because we've got really strict environmental laws. So as a result of where our clothes are being outsourced to be made, the conditions within those in the countries for in terms of workers' rights, but also environmental conditions are very loose. So what we're actually seeing is really heavy water pollution um, in terms of the chemicals that are used to make our clothes. And that is impacting, of course, on the people that live on their area in those areas. It's impacting on the water that they drink and it's impacting on the water that they use for daily life. So big impacts there on health. Um, and um, it's just not it's not good for anybody. We wouldn't put up with it in our country. So I suppose we have to question ourselves and say, well, if we wouldn't um, have our water sources being polluted so that we couldn't drink the water, surely we shouldn't expect other people um, to have, have those nasty conditions. So other impacts of the environmental, um, of the fast fashion industry are food insecurity air pollution, the way that we, the clothes are, are, are produced in the factories and the air pollution and the water pollution, habitat destruction in terms of, again, we need to plant the raw seed to produce the clothes, to blend it with the cheap uh, oil-based polyester, human rights abuse. It's the same as our, the environmental law has been very loose. The same would apply then with the workers' rights laws again. Animal suffering, water pollution, climate change, and resource uh, depletion. So when we think of our clothes, there's five major stages in the life cycle of any garment. So whatever you're wearing now, just have a think about how many, how many pairs of hands actually touched your clothes before they got to their back and what journey did it make before it actually got to your back and we tend to not really think about these things so I'm hoping today after today we'll begin to 
develop a narrative and a story behind everything that we wear so we can understand the impacts that our clothes have made. So number one, raw materials. What are our clothes made from? Um, number two, the manufacturing, the dyeing, the pulling, the carding. Um, number three, the goods and the movements. So Perhaps the cotton was made in one area, the polyester is made in another area, they travel, they're blended, they might go to another country to be cut and dyed and carded and designed, they might go to another country then to be packaged, and then number four, into customer care, into our homes, which actually can be one of the most toxic areas within the cycle um, as we wash our clothes over and over again, and the impact of washing our clothes on energy, but also the impact of washing our clothes and the microplastics that come off our clothes in the wash and go back out into the environment. So the whole cycle is really, um, it's multifaceted um, and it's, it's quite toxic. So we want to begin to think about that and we want to begin to look at our clothes and who made my clothes how many pairs of hands touched it? What's the impact of my of my T-shirt? Um, and how am I going to look after it when it gets into my home? Again, the fibres, the growing, the harvesting, the spinning, the dyeing, the cutting, the designing, the trading, and into our home. It's multifaceted. So I like this slide because I think it's very indicative of how we think about our clothes. So, for example, we have these people here waiting for the next beautiful model to come out onto the catwalk. Um, and they're not, nobody here is actually considering or thinking about the cotton work or the people who are actually making our clothes. So I think we tend to not think about this um, through marketing um, and just being caught up um, in buying our clothes. But today is about opening our, our eyes and discovering the story behind everything that we wear. So we're going to stop here and we're going to do a walking debate. I'm going to ask your teacher to um, stop the video. So a walking debate, of course, is where on one side of the room, there's a statement called there's agree. On the other side of the room, there is disagree. Your teacher is going to call out the statement and you will go to either agree or disagree and you'll discuss how you feel or what you think about the questions. So I'll just call them out here, but your teacher may stop the video and um, so you can spend about five minutes discussing this because it's important for us to share our thoughts and to facilitate conversations about how we think and how we feel about the environmental and the human impacts of our clothes. So the first walking debate question is, having a lot of clothes is important to me yes it is no it isn't which side of the room are you going to choose number two is i like to wear popular brands yes i do no i don't number three the most important thing is the price and what i mean by that is if you have 60 euro to spend, would you rather get one hoodie or top or whatever it is for 60 euro of good quality, or would you rather get three bad quality ish, bad quality items that you may need to throw out after a couple of uses? So good quality, one item on this side, and uh, I suppose it's quality versus quantity on the other side. Quality and quantity. And the last walking debate question is, I care about the environment when I shop. Yes, I do. No, I don't. And maybe for some of you, you've never even considered the environment before you shop. And that's OK. Today is about learning. And I hope at the end of this presentation, we'll all be thinking about the people who made our clothes and the environmental impacts of how our clothes are made as well. 
So still on the environmental impacts. There's a joke in China that you can tell the it color of the season by looking at the color of rivers. 70% of rivers and lakes are contaminated by the 2.5 billion gallons of wastewater produced by the textile industry. So again, just tying um, the waste and, and how the those countries where our clothes are outsourced are set up in terms of environmental protection and um, again this wouldn't happen in ireland where we live so any of our clothes that are made from polyester acrylic or nylon are actually fossil fuel based so they're they're like plastic. So you might again stop and have a look at the tag on your shirt or your t-shirt. And predominantly a lot of our clothes are actually made from polyester or polyester blends. And um, that is a problem, um, first of all, because they're fossil fuels, so contributing to climate change. But second of all, it's a problem because they're plastic, fossil fuel based. So essentially, um, they, they're plastic based. And what happens is when we put our polyester nylon or acrylic clothes into the washing machine, these tiny, tiny microplastics come off. We can't see them with the naked eye. They're so tiny and they wash out into the drains um, and out into our waterways. So scientists have actually found microplastics in soil, in rain and in snow. So that will tell you how many microplastics are entering into the ocean and our clothes are predominantly a source of those microplastics. So what can the me, the self and the I do? We can um, look at the clothes, the materials that we're buying. So can we buy clothes with as high as percentage of cotton or bamboo or other natural materials as well that will be gentle on the environment and not synthetic like plastic is? So in terms of waste and because we're throwing out um, all of our clothes on average after seven times, um, they say there's about a bin full of textiles being burnt or sent to landfill. Um, and all of this waste is just building up, building up, building up. About 225,000 tonnes of fabric waste are disposed of every year in Ireland. So our, our, it's just the accumulation of waste. Again, because a lot of the materials are synthetic, it's a bit like a plastic bottle. If you throw it away, your plastic bottle isn't a natural material. It doesn't break down. So if I throw my T-shirt in the bush, it's made from polyester which is oil-based, plastic-based, my t-shirt isn't going to break down in, in, the, in the environment. It's going to stay there for literally decades and decades and decades. So we have this accumulation of waste. So now the hum human impact. So hands up if anybody would like to work in this factory. So not sure if any of you had your hands up or not, but I know I wouldn't. I presume it is uh, very noisy. Uh, maybe the there isn't great air conditioning. It's probably very hot. Um, and the other thing you might notice about the photo is that it's predominantly women who are doing the work. And in this photo here, it's just about getting us to question not only the materials our clothes are made from, but we need to question who made our clothes and are the people who made our clothes, are they being treated fairly and, and correctly? So are they working in conditions that are safe and good for their health? Are they getting a fair wage? Um, and if we're looking at a picture like this and we're saying, well, actually, I wouldn't work there. Should we really expect other people to work in those conditions in order for us to get cheap clothes? Probably not, but that's up to you. I certainly don't. So other impacts of the fast fashion industry in relation to human rights and workers' rights. So because a lot of our, our clothes, again, are predominantly outsourced to China, India and Pakistan, and the labour laws do exist within these countries, but they're quite loose. And we've known about the conditions that these people have been working in for decades and decades and decades. And really in the last four or five years has been a really um, 
it's really becoming to the forefront where companies are beginning to be questioned um, for around the conditions that the people are working in. But we're still a long way away from really safeguarding these people and for industries being completely transparent in terms of how their where their clothes are being outsourced to and the conditions that those workers are working in so impacts are child labor forced labor not earning or wor working a living wage and then working really long hours as well so this was um one of um a dreadful tragedy and within that year there was actually three similar tragedies it was this is known as the Ran Ranga plaza disaster in 2017 and it was where 1130 people fast fashion workers died and two 2500 uh, were injured when the building collapsed so what happened was on the bottom layer of the building was a bank and they'd actually noticed the structural damage in the building and um, about a week before it collapsed and the people who were working in the bank were told that they could leave because the building was unsafe the people working within the fast fashion factory were ordered to stay the reason they were ordered to stay was because the, fa the brands put these fact factories under massive stress and really really tight um lines to produce the clothes really quickly right remember 52 micro collections a year so if the brand is saying to the factory well if you can't produce these clothes within a certain amount of time and um, well we're just going to go to another factory so what we're seeing is a supply chain from the brand all the way down to um the factory the factory worker the the person in the field the environment where our clothes are outsourced the whole chain is getting completely squeezed by the brand at the top whose aim is number one to make as much money as possible and number two to produce fast fashion clothes really quickly in order so they can get onto our backs and they can make as much money as possible so the people down the other other end of the chain are just completely squeezed so within this instance, there was an outcry across the world um, and it began to really highlight the conditions that these people were working in. So again, it's it's up to you and me um, to kind of decide to investigate our clothes. Um, and, and I'm going to, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a tool on how we can investigate our clothes and investigate brands. So we need to take responsibility for that ourselves and decide, are we okay with the environmental harm our clothes may be making? Are we okay with the people who made our clothes maybe not working in great conditions? So it does come down to uh, the me, the self, the I, what we think about this, but also really importantly to critically think about what we're using and what we're consuming and what is the impact behind what is the story behind what we use and what we consume so this is a really good question and i used to fall into this trap so i used to think if i was buying an item of clothing and if, if it was expensive i presumed it was ethical but actually that's not the case which is why we need to investigate the brands that we wear so for example uh, victoria beckham's um signature uh pants were 300 she charges 329 pounds 95 for them but yet the worker in china is getting paid one pound 60. so you can see again the profit the brand is making lots of money and down the end the people who's actually producing and making the clothes these people are getting squeezed so don't assume that it's ethical if it's expensive what you need to do is go and investigate what you're wearing so the fast fashion business model is built on a profit, uh, uh, environmental protection and human rights have gotten lost. And this is just to kind of back that up. So a t-shirt that costs 29 pounds, retails at 17 euro, profit to the band is 361, the material costs 340, transport 219, intermediate 120, and so on. We have our pay to the worker and um, getting 18 cents at the very bottom. So again, reiterate, our brands are making the, the money at the top 
and the people at the bottom are becoming exploited, but also their environment is becoming exploited as well. So what I'm going to ask you to do is actually to investigate your wardrobe and investigate the clothes that you wear. So what you need to do is you need to go onto this website. It's called Good On You. And you can literally go on to Good On You, put in the brand that you are looking for. And I'll show you this at the end. So for example, I'm going to go on to Good On You. I'm going to put on in Nike and all the information will come up. The Good On You website will tell me if Nike is ethical for people, ethical for planet, and ethical for animals, the materials as well that they're sourcing. So it's a really, really good tool for you guys to use um, because it's an easy way for you to investigate the brands you wear and see if they're ethical for people and environment and animals. And we'll have a look at that at the end. So the other thing about fast fashion is, and hopefully that might change is is through the sustainable development goals and the Paris Agreement, which links to climate change. So now businesses have to, because globally we're trying to reduce resources, uh, climate change, greenhouse gases, um, by 50% globally by 2030, now businesses have to report on things like their transport, the chemicals they're using, the materials they're using, and they have to prove that they are reducing their own carbon footprints. So as a result, we are seeing brands begin to strive towards sustainability, okay? So they have to um, look at materials and chemicals that um, aren't as wasteful. Um, and they also have to look around the areas of transporting the goods from A to B. If you think of, let's say, Marks and Spencers and all the Marks and Spencers stores um, within England or Ireland, or even Pennies, all the stores within England and Ireland. And as those goods are getting transported across the world to make our clothes, the materials, the cutting, the pulling, the carding, the designing, the packaging, all of that is really energy intensive and, and chemical intensive as well. So within the sustainable development goals, within the um, Paris Agreement, businesses now have to report, which means they have to begin to flip the way our clothes are made and how our clothes are transported. So hopefully there's a bit of hope there for the environment and for the people that are making our clothes and the fast fashion industry hopefully will begin to evolve to be more sustainably. Other things that you and I can do, we can look at um, supporting clothes that are have a fair trade brand. So um, it's the same as your coffee, your bananas and your chocolate. So what fair trade is ensuring that the people, the worker at the bottom of the chain, that I, they actually get paid a fair wage. Other things you can do, you can buy secondhand clothes and they're becoming really, really popular now, these shops. So instead of um, buying new things all the time that you might throw out after six or seven times, can you buy secondhand or can you have a swap shop in school or can you swap with your friends if you're sick of your hoodie or your t-shirt or your leggings or whatever it is that actually you can yeah, swap with your friends, uh, get something new um, and they can get something new and it's not making a big impact then. So if we're wearing our clothes over 35 times, we kind of are, um, we're lessening the damage, the fast fashion damage. And um, so if we wear it more, um, it, has, it has an impact. Other things you can do is, this is a website called New, so you can borrow, lend, swap clothes, and um, especially if you have something coming up, um, and you don't want to buy a suit or a shirt, a shirt or a fancy dress that actually you can just rent it now, which is great. It's really exciting. Some of you might already be on Depop. Of course, it's if you're not, it's the app where you can go on and you could resell the clothes that you're not wearing, which is brilliant. So if you're not aware of Depop, I definitely encourage you to download the app um, and check it out. It's really good. Other things you can do is you can choose natural fabrics, linen, bamboo, cotton, silk, hemp, um, or recycled 
uh, fat fabrics. So again, remember the polyester, the nylon and the acrylic, when we're putting those in the washing machine, all the microplastics are coming off. So um, if we get natural materials, we're also lessening the impact as well. So um, look at the materials your clothes are made from and try and get as high a possi possibility um, a cotton blend or whatever it is that you're looking for. Be a fast fashion recycler. This is a really big trend now that's coming on. Um, upcycling your clothes, redesigning your clothes. Um, it's it's great, it's fun, and um, you can make something that's completely original as well. Mend your clothes as well. So I know now when we're using cheap materials, and um, sometimes to try and fix a hole in a polyester t-shirt it doesn't really hold but can you cut the you can actually if your t-shirt's at the end of its life you can actually do things like make a tote bag instead so quick google and um, what can i do to reuse my leggings um, and you'll come up with lots of really really creative ideas the other thing is don't wash your clothes as much um, a lot of us are tend to maybe when we're tidying our bedroom, we scoop everything up off the floor and we put it in the wash and it may not even be that dirty. So if we wash our clothes less or only wash our clothes when they really are dirty um, make sure that we're lessening the energy impact, we're lessening the water impact. And we're also lessening the microplastics that go down the drain when they come off our clothes. So just next time you're about to chuck something in the wash, give it a good look give it a whiff, see as it really is, if it is dirty, if it's not dirty, put it back in the wardrobe, you might get another go out of it. So we're, we're also seeing this shift with brands. So um, H&M, for example, have conscious, pennies have come out 1% of their clothing line, they use organic cotton. Um, Zara as well, we're seeing lots of brands beginning to strive to have small amounts within their collection that actually are ethical, right? But just be careful of greenwashing and be careful um, because unless you're going for Patagonia or Stella McCarthy brands that are really expensive, their clothing lines are 100% ethical and sustainable, right? Other clothing brands, fast fashion brands in particular, H&M, Zara, uh, pennies, Bershka, um, Boohoo, um, they might have a small percentage of their, their clothing line that's ethical, but they will market it and say that they are an ethical brand when they're not. So the responsibility comes down to the me, the self and the I to critically think about our clothes and to ask questions. Go onto that, that good on you website, investigate the clothes that you wear. It's up to us to um, have a look. So the other thing we need to do is we've accumulated 80 billion garments a year we're making. We've accumulated all of this massive waste. So what can we do with this waste? So it's about trying to create, take this waste and create it in, uh, into another product. So it's not going to landfill or it's not ending up in the environment or it's not getting burned. So um, the circular economy aims to eliminate waste. So for example, you know that spongy stuff in playgrounds that actually can be made from old runners. So can we look at the waste that we've accumulated and can we make more clothes or can we make um, that spongy stuff for playgrounds? What can we do? Can we upcycle our, our clothes? So we need to avoid waste and we need to be creative and redesign the waste out of our, our environments. So my question to you is, will you change your wardrobe for people and for the environment? So I hope so. Um, let's have a think about how the impact our clothes are making, not only on the environment, but on people. Um, and let's begin to look at alternatives, buy less, buy good quality, uh, wash your clothes less, swap and um, buy secondhand. Um, and there's lots of things that you and I can do. And of course, this all comes back to knowledge and knowledge is power. And when we know um, the impacts of our clothes in terms of environment, but also in terms of people, we can then begin to make better decisions. So to recap, 
The fast, and fast fashion industry is the second largest polluter after fossil fuel. The world now consumes about 80 billion new pieces of clothing every year, 400% more than just two decades ago. Leading countries for production where our clothes are made, China, Bangladesh and India, the role of the consumer, you and me, the me, the self and the I, is waste and climate change. Fast fashion impacts on the environment and humans. Buy less, buy secondhand, swap, upcycle, recycle, mend and support your Irish designers. So again, this all comes back to your checklist, okay? Educate yourself. Get involved in um, mass email campaign campaigns to um, get behind brands so that they're transparent about their impacts on people and their impacts on the environment. And what you could do is actually just set up a swap shop in schools, set up a, a rail of clothing where people can bring, leave, take any items they don't want. So I hope you've lots of ideas there on what you can do. So it suggests now that everybody, if you have access to technology, that you can go onto that good on you website and um, go into the brand directory, select any brand you want, Boohoo, Bershka, Zara, H&M, doesn't matter, select the brand and um, and then you can investigate how that brand is doing in terms of people and environment. So next time when you go to buy some clothes, you'll know the impact that your clothes are making and you can make an informed and ethical decision. Hope you enjoyed the session. Best of luck.